Spring is upon us. After a few months of cold and winter and darker days and longer nights, spring is finally here. It feels like such a wonderful season because this is when everything starts to come back to life. So let's talk about how to make the most of it and how to romanticize your life this spring. Hello friends and welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, tap into their divine feminine and become their best self. So if that's something you wanna do, you should subscribe and stick around. So spring is here, the sun is starting to shine, the days are starting to get longer, the sun isn't setting at like 4 p.m. or anything anymore. And I don't know about you, but where I live, the flowers are just barely starting to bloom and it is chef's kiss, so beautiful. So here are 20 little ways to romanticize your life this spring because life is what you make of it. So the first one is my favorite. So spring is a time of new beginnings, new growth, blooming and rebirth, right? That's what spring is all about, new beginnings. It's even the beginning of a new astrological new year. So I think that this time can be a really powerful time to manifest and set intentions because you have that energy of rebirth and new beginnings behind you. The beginning of a new year is when we oftentimes set those bigger goals, but sometimes it can feel a little bit weird because winter is our cocooning season, right? It's where we naturally go a little bit more inward and want to rest and slow down a bit. So sometimes we can find it hard to go like 100% all in on our goals starting in January. To me, it almost feels like January through March is like the buildup to the real stuff. So look at your goals and intentions that you made for yourself on January 1st of the new year and figure out, do these still resonate with me? Do I need to adjust any of these? Do I have any new things that I want to add on here that I want to manifest. Reassess your goals, your intentions, everything that you're trying to manifest this year. Get clear on what you want and use that energy of spring equinox to boost you there. Spring is when we normally start planting those seeds for a garden, right? So think about it as you planting the seeds for your spiritual garden. Now, moving on to number two, if you want to manifest things in your life and bring good things into your life, you have to make space for that to come in. And that's why it is so important and so good to do a little bit of a spring cleaning and decluttering. When you have a cluttered physical space, this can oftentimes create energetic blocks. Everything is energy and the environment we live in is no different. And if your environment, your home is cluttered, disorganized, overwhelming, then that is just low vibe. It does not allow for that good energy and for things to come in as easily. And so when you clean all of that, you get rid of the things that you no longer need. You get rid of the clutter. You make energetic space for that to come in and you also make physical space for you to receive those things that you want. It's like if you wanna make more money, a lot of people say that you should clean out your wallet and make sure that you have a clean wallet. There's no like random old receipts and clutter in there because you want to create the financial energy and environment for things to come in easily. That clutter and disorganization can create blocks. And keeping your space clean and open decluttered is a way that we show the universe like, hey, look, I can take care of what I receive. I am grateful for what I receive and you can tell that by the way I take care of my things. And also like, hey, look, I've got room for more. So clean and declutter, and this will make your space feel more energetically high vibe and enticing. And number three, when I think of spring, I always think of flowers. Like spring is flowers to me. That is just the association. So bring pretty flowers into your home, especially colorful ones like pink and yellow and bright happy ones. Like tulips are really good and peonies are really good. I also love hydrangeas, especially blue hydrangeas. I don't think those are a spring flower. I think those are summer, but still, I love those. I just think that spring is a wonderful time to bring more life and color into your home. And an amazing way to do this is with flowers and flower arranging. So you can just go to Trader Joe's, grab a few of your favorite bouquets, the ones that look pretty to you, and arrange them into a few different vases throughout the house and it really just elevates the whole space. It definitely makes your home more spring, more happy, more high vibe. And number four, another thing that I love about spring is sundresses and just bringing more color back into my clothing and updating my closet to a more spring wardrobe. For fall and winter, I tend to channel more of that like dark feminine energy. I like a little bit more of those like moodier vibes, more darker, moodier colors. Like I think that's really fun. But then in spring and summer, I definitely gravitate to more of like light feminine energy type of 
clothing and sundresses and all those things. So I think it is fun to embrace a little bit of both, but for spring especially, that is like light feminine energy to me. So to me, that feels more like wearing flowy sundresses, wearing more like happy pastel colors, like pink and purple and blue and yellow, less black. And if I want to do something a little bit more neutral, it's usually white or navy. And if it's still a little bit chilly in the spring where you live, one thing that you can do is to wear a sundress, especially like a longer sundress, like a maxi or something or a midi and throw a good like sweater on top of it. It usually still keeps you warm enough, but feels more like spring. Or just wearing like a skirt with a sweater, but just more like happy fun colors. Maybe even add a cute little hair bow or a cute little clip. Oh, I actually have a really cute clip that I just got. I'm gonna show you. It's a little claw clip, but it has a little pink flower on it. And it's so cute. Very cute, very spring, right? The brand that makes this is Lily Sadogi, or I don't know how to say her name, but she's the one who makes the really big headbands. That's, um, I don't really like the big headbands, but I like the smaller ones she has and then her clips are really cute. But also Anthropology is a really great place to shop for really cute hair accessories, like really cute hair clips and things like that, especially for spring. Next number five, if you have any outdoor space, whether that is a big backyard or just a tiny little apartment balcony, give it a good sprucing. I have a big backyard now that I love and is so beautiful. But before when I lived in an apartment, I just had a tiny little balcony. And I remember that every winter it would kind of get a little gross. Like it would kind of get a little bit dirty and it needed to be washed off. So clean up your outdoor space and just make it more cozy and functional. Maybe that would mean adding a cute little chair and side table where you can sit and have your morning coffee in the morning. Just make it more of a nice environment, somewhere where you can actually feel comfortable hanging out for a little bit. Maybe even add, you know, a cute little outdoor rug or something like that. Go a little crazy. You can get some pretty cheap stuff from Target and stores like that, but also Facebook Marketplace can be another way to find more affordable things like this. But in the same sort of thing, number six, make your outdoor space cuter by adding plants and herbs, or maybe if you just have a balcony, potted plants or potted herbs. And if you don't have any outdoor space at all, there are things like communal gardens where you can, I believe, just rent a little plot where you can garden, either grow flowers or grow herbs or veggies or things like that. And if that's something that you're really into, you can look into that. We're actually renovating our backyard right now and I'm so excited it should be fully ready by sometime this spring. Um, we're adding like a little fire pit and stuff, but also a bunch of flowers. And I'm so excited because our backyard is great, but it has just been kind of open space, just grass but we're adding a bunch of flowers and a bunch of like life to it. We're even adding a little like water feature too. I'm just excited to have some color back there. So add flowers if you can, like either just throw some seeds down and hope for the best or go to a nursery and get some cute flowers and plant them into your dirt. But adding flowers just makes the season so much more spring, right? Spring is flowers. It just can add a lot of joy and beauty to the season. And number seven, don't forget to push back the blinds, push back the curtains, let that natural light in and open the windows and let that spring breeze in. Now that it's starting to get warmer, it just feels good to have that spring air come into your home. It just adds that extra bit of life to your home. It's just really refreshing, it's really romantic, and it just kind of connects you more to the season. Number eight, another fun thing to do in spring is strawberry picking. I think their season is like, their peak season is like late spring. So I think like May, June is like the best time to go strawberry picking, but I love strawberries. They've always been been like one of my favorite fruits. And if you bring your own basket, like one of those cute straw ones, then you can probably get a really cute picture there too. Now, another thing that I love about spring and something that I love to take advantage of is, you know, I'm a pale girly. This is just who I am. And I can get pretty scorched from the sun pretty easily. But one thing that I love about spring, especially those early spring days, is that yes, the sun is starting to shine. It's starting to feel warmer but it's soft sun. The UV rays are not as intense and harsh, so I love to enjoy some time in the soft sun, especially like the 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. kind of sun. That is my favorite. The sun is good and healthy and necessary. We need that vitamin D to function at our best, but too much sun is not good either. That can be damaging to us. So spring, especially those early spring days are just so perfect for getting that soft sun. It feels so much more gentle. And I feel like there are a good few weeks, just a few weeks 
where you get that nice, gentle, soft sun. So don't miss it and take advantage of it. Go outside, go for walks, enjoy it. Number 10, so switching things up a bit, winter is more of that time where we naturally tend to go inward and kind of spend a little bit more time alone. You may still be productive and learning new things, but I find that winter is the time where we kind of go inward for those things. We do those things more alone and in the privacy of our home, like learning how to knit or something. But spring is more of that getting out there energy, getting out of the house, getting out into the world. So this spring, challenge yourself to go out alone, go out into the world and try something new. Maybe that's showing up to that yoga in the park event or trying that pottery class that you've always wanted to sign up for, or finally just signing up for that improv class and just doing it, just going already. Now's the time, it's spring baby, it's rebirth, it's new beginnings, it's growth. And stop waiting to find a friend that will go with you and just go. I mean, you can totally go with friends, but what I'm saying is don't wait to find a friend. You don't need to ask everyone you know to see if they will do this one thing with you. Just go do it, just show up. I promise it's not that hard and you might even make a new friend. Okay, number 11 is Bridgerton, the Netflix show. Bridgerton has the most gorgeous scenery. It is so nice to look at and it has such spring vibes. Like if you've seen Bridgerton, then you know what I'm talking about. It is just filled with color, so many flowers, so many beautiful dresses, so many beautiful garden scenes, lots of green. It is just such a spring vibe. That show does get a little bit steamy, but it is entertaining for sure. And it's just so beautiful to look at. I'm sure there are probably some other good TV shows and movies that just shout spring. Um, so if you have any recommendations, leave them in the comments below. Another cute little way to romanticize spring is to make homemade lemonade. I Ideally, healthier homemade lemonade, which basically you just make by having some water, like some nice ice cold water or sparkling water if you want, and then having some fresh squeezed lemon juice, and then having a sugar in there. Like regular lemonade is just cane sugar, but you could do honey or any other sort of sugar alternative that you like. Throw some lemon wedges in there and so yummy, so refreshing. It feels very much like spring. Number 13, eat more seasonally and incorporate more spring season fruits and veggies into your diet. So that is things like strawberries, artichoke. I love artichoke. Radishes, rhubarb, avocado, I think. Cherries, asparagus, peas, apricots, and lots of different types of greens. So just try adding some more spring foods into your diet. It's a great way to embrace the season. And also it's the time of the year where those foods tend to be the tastiest and most nutritious. Next thing you can do that I think is fun is you can make a little spring mood board on Pinterest. So basically a mood board is just a collection of images that sort of channel a certain mood or vibe or energy that you want to have. And it's kind of like a vision board, but different. A vision board is more about like things you actually really want to have or achieve. Whereas a mood board is more about just like a general mood. So this would be the vibe that you want for spring. And you can literally put anything on there. There are no rules. There can be quotes. There can be pictures of animals, pictures of dresses, color schemes, natures, or just any pictures that encompass a certain energy. And I think that making a mood board can be a fun little creative passive activity. This is something that you can do when you're winding down at night and and is in my opinion, a better thing than just like scrolling on Instagram for hours. Moving on, number 15, buy a new plant for your home, like a living plant, not just flowers, but like an actual potted plant that you have to take care of and water. Again, spring is about life, it's about rebirth, so bring some of that life into your home. Get a plant, ideally one that's not too hard, give it a name, give it a good little location in your house, and take care of it. Watch it grow. It's very rewarding, and it really does make your space feel a lot more peaceful. Okay, so number 16, I am not normally a DIY kind of girl. Like I'm just not into that kind of stuff, but this one I saw and I thought it was really cute. And that is DIY pressed flower art. So basically you pick flowers from your garden and then you press them, which you do this, You there are things like flower presses, but you don't need that. You can just press them really hard into a book or something like that for a few weeks. So basically they get pressed flat and then you glue them to like art paper, like watercolor paper, and then put them in a frame. And it looks really cute. And my friend actually just did this with her four-year-old daughter and it was a cute little activity they did together. 
and this would be a great thing to do with kids, but also like I would totally do this on my own. There's tons of how to's online. Just type in DIY pressed flower art and there's a lot of instructions on there. This could just be a cute little thing to celebrate spring and add some more personal art into your home. Another way to romanticize spring is to go to afternoon tea or high tea. Um, a lot of different places will have this, but it's usually more like nicer hotels. And then also, at least near me, some like cafes and cute lunch spots will have it as well. Just search afternoon tea or high tea near me on Google and see if anything comes up. The whole vibe of afternoon tea is just so cute. You know, you get to wear a cute little outfit. The environment is just so beautiful. You have tea and cute little snacks and you just have a good time. And it just very much feels like spring to me. So next, not all cities have this, but if you do, visit your city garden. It's usually like an estate and garden kind of thing. We have one near us in Nashville called Cheekwood, which is beautiful. If you're ever in the area, you should totally check it out. But even when I was living in LA, there was a beautiful big one in Pasadena called Huntington Garden, I think. And you can just walk through it and spend the whole afternoon there. And in spring, it's like peak beauty, right? Because there's just so many flowers and so much color. You could go there with friends, you could go on a date, or you could totally just go alone and bring a journal and sit there and enjoy it. So look if you have one of these near you. There's usually one in every sort of bigger city. There's also like Biltmore Estates in Asheville, North Carolina. So there are a bunch of ones out there. If you live relatively close to one, then you should take advantage of it. You usually do have to pay to go walk through it and see it. It's usually not free, but I do think that it's worth it to at least do it once. Number 19, the next way to romanticize your life this spring is to switch to a more spring-like fragrance. So in the fall and winter, I tend to wear more fragrances that are like more moodier and sexier. That's kind of the vibe that I want. But once it switches to spring and summer, I like a little bit lighter and happier. The ones that I like and wear are from Dime Beauty. This isn't sponsored, but the ones that I like specifically for spring and summer are, there's one called I Love Your Smell Baby. And that one is very like fruity and sweet. And then there's also Seven Summers. And that one's also very like sweet and vanilla-like. They both smell really good. They both last and they both really remind me of spring summer vibes. And last but not least, number 20, have a little outdoor shindig, a little outdoor party. So if you have a backyard, that's easy, right? You can just kind of barbecue all together and have people over and hang out outside and maybe have some drinks or play cornhole or something, I don't know, but that's really easy. But if you don't, you can totally go meet up at a nice park, somewhere that has nice park benches and you can all bring food to eat or you can just bring a bunch of picnic blankets, lay all the blankets down together and have a little party on the grass. Everyone can bring snacks. People can bring wine if they want it. You guys can have some like charcuterie, super easy, super casual, but this is just a fun way to hang out with friends and embrace the season. And that is it. That is the last of my Romanticize Your Life series. I did one for each season. So when summer comes around, you can go check out my summer one. But let me know in the comments, what are your favorite things to do in the spring? or if there's anything that you want to add to this list, comment down below. I'm sure there are a ton of good ideas floating between all of us. So just share below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got some great ideas for spring. I hope you truly embrace and love this spring season. Hope it brings you lots of joy and happiness and I will see you next time in my next video. Bye.